Hello, kindergarten. How are you? I'm smiling because I've been having fun making little cartoons of you guys, and I hope you have been enjoying it. All of you seen it. Doing cartwheels. Did anybody do a cartwheel for me? I enjoyed some of your writing and some of your pictures. John, you're doing okay there? Try to keep up with us, okay, if you can. If you see us, make sure you say hello to us. This book is about a young girl who decides to change the world. And even though it's a young girl, it could be about a boy changing the world, but we have four young girls in this class, and I hope you ladies will think about making the world a better place. I know in many ways you don't think about it, but just being nice people, and you've been nice to me, you've been a nice person that made my life better. And I'm sure you made Miss Bellacy's life better too. Our house is on fire. It is a biography, and a biography is a book about a person. So it's a story about their life and how they got to some place in different ways. And this is a picture book version of it. And it's by Jeanette Winters, but she wrote it about a little girl called Greta Thunberg. And it's Greta Thunberg's call to save the planet. Greta is a quiet girl who led a quiet life in the city of Stockholm. Her dog Roxy was her friend. All my life, I've been invisible. The invisible girl in the back who doesn't say anything. In school, she fell alone. Then one day, Greta's teacher talked to the class about climate, about how the planet is getting warmer, about how polar ice is melting, about how the animals' lives are threatened, and ours too. That's when Greta's life changed. She read for hours and watched film after film about warming, the warming world. And Greta could think about one thing for a very long time. You ladies are probably starting to read. John, I hope you're starting to read. Sandra, are you reading anything good? Is your brothers, are they helping you read? I hope so. I bet Charlie Scott is helping you, right, Kylie? She saw ice melting into the sea, disappearing. She saw the mighty winds and torrential rains howling across the land. See who she's got there for comfort? Her dog. Aubrey, you got an animal that you cuddle with every once in a while? How about you, Leandra? I think you guys all have dogs and cats that you can comfort you. She saw the coral reefs deep down in the sea, pale as ghosts, bleached by the warming waters. Greta saw living creatures everywhere, struggling to stay alive. So Greta's watching this stuff and seeing bad things happening to the world, and it's kind of freaking her out. Greta saw floodwaters covering houses and people and animals. She saw cities swallowed under rising oceans. She saw a smoldering sun scorch the earth, leaving it bone dry. She saw blazing fires racing through the forest. All of this happening because the earth is getting warmer. Our house is on fire. Gretchen became sad thinking about the climate all the time. She barely ate or spoke. Those pictures were stuck in my mind, she said. The sad days went on for a long time, each day more unhappy than the next. There might not be a world to live in when she grows up. What use is school without a future? What can I do, she wondered. What can I do? That's going to probably be one of my questions today, is what can you do? Greta decided to go on strike from school for climate. Her parents understood. She doesn't speak English, she speaks Swedish because she's from Sweden. So the sign is not in English, it's in another language. Greta skipped school on Friday and took her poster, School Strike for Climate, to the Parliament building to set outside on strike. She hoped lawmakers would see her. People walked past, too busy to notice. 
Greta was invisible there too. The parliament building is their government building, sort of like the White House. So she was there where all the big shots of politics were. She was at parliament building every Friday, even in the rain. Then word of her strike began to spread. Little by little, other school strikers joined her. On Fridays, Stockholm schools were just a bit more empty. More people started, in, started to notice the children's strikers and word spread through cyberspace about Friday school strikes. Children start striking everywhere. If grown-ups wouldn't act to save the planet, children would. And I don't know if you can see this, but right there they're, they're saying strike in a lot of different languages. Quiet girl who always felt invisible was asked to speak to very important people at the United Nations climate talks in Poland. Greta only spoke when she thought it was necessary. necessary. You say you love your children above all else, yet you are stealing their future in front of their eyes, she said. We need to keep fossil fuels in the ground. So even if you're quiet, you can be a thinker, and then when you do talk, you use your words for good cause. Can you do that, Kylie? You're kind of quiet, but you have smart thoughts, right? You can help people. The quiet girl was invited to speak to important people at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. It was necessary to speak. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. I want you to act as if the house is on fire, because it is. How many of you are brave enough to stand in front of a bunch of people and say what you believe? Lots of people, hundreds of people. I think that's one of my questions, too. Greta's protest all alone sparked a worldwide children's march. Her quiet voice joined thousands of voices and began a roar. Can you hear us? And all of the children were holding signs, all different kinds of signs. So my question, I have two of them. I would like you to tell me you can be a person that makes the world better. And you don't have to make big things. You can just be nice to your brothers and sisters. You could just say hello to people, be friendly. So tell me, what are you going to do to make the world better, number one? And number two, would you be brave enough to speak to a big room to tell people what you believe? I know I'd be nervous. And I don't know if every day I make the world better, but I try. And I hope you can too. Okay, guys. Until next week. Oh, I got a new cartoon for you. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you like it. And how do we rate this book, huh? <laughs>